Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello and welcome, world, to the Call by God podcast. I'm yours truly, Nixon Sylvain. And once again, my co-host, Adney, is not with me, but that's okay. She's still making some life adjustments in the ATL. So she's here with us in the spirit, but I'm also here uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, So I'm excited to have God in the midst of me. And I'm just excited to have this wonderful guest. But before we bring her on, I want to just thank my Lord and my Savior for giving us the strength and the opportunity to be on this platform and to be touching lives and be, to, to be touching hearts and just to hear these testimonies. These testimonies have been a, a blessing, not only to me, uh, not only to Adney, but also those uh, around the world. So it, it is a blessing. It's been an honor uh, to to sit here on this seat and to listen uh, to testimonies and also have discussions about biblical characters now if you like or you enjoy any episodes in this uh, podcast please share or leave a review on www.callbygodpodcast.com i mean it will help the analytics and it'll help the message get out to more people that's uh, seeking christ so i'm excited today um as you all know adney typically she usually does the uh word for today so I'm going to uh, sit in her seat. And I'm going to have the pleasure of doing that. I'm doing that this this uh, today. So Proverbs, the word for today is coming from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 23, verse 22. And it states, listen to your father who begat you and do not despise your mother when she is old. Now, this proverb is pretty much straightforward, um, is telling, is sharing wisdom and telling, sharing with the children per se, hey, you need to listen to your daddy. Listen to your father who had you, who who begot you, who's responsible for your being here on earth. And uh, it says, do not despise uh, your mother when she is old. And I like this. Um, well, I, I would say this. Um, number one, I don't have a father or mother. I would say biological father or mother. But God has uh, blessed me with some uh, men of God who he has surrounded me with, who I've considered uh, mentors. And he, he has surrounded me with godly, godly mothers as well. But for those who still have a mother that's alive, uh, please, please do not despise them. Please do not reject them. Pay, cl- pay close attention to them. Call them. Text them. Uh, show up at their doorstep and tell them how much you love them um, just because they're old. Um, that doesn't mean it gives you the license or the right to neglect them. And also, if you have a father that's giving you wisdom, if you have a father that's um, trying to knock some sense into you, listen to them. Okay? Don't be disobedient to your parents. So that is uh, very, very, very key. So I like this proverb. But I'm excited today because we have a special guest uh, that we have invited to our platform. And our guest is going to share her upbringing, uh, how she was called by God, and some of the trials and tribulations that she went through and have overcome. And now she has a zeal for God. She's giving glory to God. And she has a passion for sharing uh, the word of God with, with people. Uh, and she's very zealous. And she's going to talk about very, I mean, because... The, the tr- let the truth be told. Uh, when, when you're called into ministry, when you're called in the body of Christ, you're going to have some ups and downs. You're going to have go through some highs. You're going to go through some lows. But through it all, the good thing about it is that Jesus Christ in the midst is in the midst of Christians. And he stated that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So I always have that saying that I'd rather go through issues with Christ then go through issues without Christ. So if you haven't yet obeyed the gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, I would highly encourage you to, because I can't imagine how people are living life without Christ. So I hope, pray that this message or this testimony 
will help you draw closer to Christ. So without further ado, I now introduce to you uh, Sister Jasmine Reed. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. But I'm excited to have you on the show. So let's get right into it. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Jazz. Well, Jasmine, but I go by Jazz. Um, I'm a fourth grade teacher. I teach math. Um, I've been working with kids for a little while since I want to say 2006. Um, while I was in school, I was working with kids, like doing aftercare. And I love being around kids. Um, I feel like kids are very honest and very true. Um, I just love being around them. So I've been working with them for a while. Um, I didn't. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a teacher. I kind of went back and forth with that. I actually went to school to be an accountant, believe it or not. And somehow, I don't know how, I ended up in education. I left business, ended up in education. I don't know how that happened, but I'm grateful that it did happen, though, because I love being around the little ones. They work my nerves, but I enjoy them. Um, I have a son named Jeremiah. He's 14. No, I mean 16. (laughs) Jesus. He's 16. Um... I had him when I was 19, my first year in college. Um, and he was my motivation to finish school because my parents were really upset that I ended up pregnant at 19. They were not the happiest parents. But I must say, um, I'm thankful for him. He uh, he really pushed me. I'm thankful that God blessed him, blessed me with him. He pushed me to go harder and to be better. Amen, amen. So we're going to get right into it, Sister Jasmine. I want to hear the origin of your story. How was life like before you became a Christian? Share with our listeners your background history. I actually got baptized at 13. Um, But, of course, I definitely was not living for Christ. Um, High school wasn't that bad. I was was very quiet, stayed to myself. Um, I wasn't a follower. Like all of my friends were doing, having sex and smoking and stuff, but that just wasn't me. Um, I was the type of person I'm not doing nothing I don't want to do, especially if I know it's just not a good thing. Prayer pressure didn't work on me. <clears throat> but uh, it's interesting because my trauma really changed my mindset. When I was 13, I was molested by my um, by my cousin's husband. And believe it or not, we just came out and said something like two years ago. I was going to go to my grave with it, but my cousin, she was persistent about, you know, being free and just, you know, getting it out, letting the family know. I didn't really see a point, but I went on with it anyway. But that happening to me, it literally changed my perception on men. It changed my perception on life. I was very angry for a long time. Um, I should dress like a boy because I wanted to cover my body up. I didn't want men to look at me. I didn't want them to like touch me. I questioned my sexuality for a while. Um, it did a lot of damage. It did a lot of damage. And it wasn't that I was afraid to tell my mom. Um, I can admit, I found myself being more loyal to him than to telling my truth because it's not like something that just like happened. Like he gained our trust. He did it to me and my cousin, Amanda. <clears throat> Um, he actually took her virginity, but he didn't take mine because I fought him. But um, I like he got to know us. You know, he befriended us, spent a lot of time with us. So it was like, you know, this is my oh, this is my cousin's husband. This is my cousin. Like I truly loved him. And like once he got that trust, it's like you know that's when he prayed on it and just made the move. And I was really confused when it first happened because my parents didn't expose me to stuff like that. I wasn't exposed to sex. I wasn't exposed to you know alcohol and stuff. Like they just didn't do that stuff in front of me, um, and they didn't even allow me to go around adults who did. It. Like my dad was very very protective of us. Like we couldn't spend a night in nobody's house. <laughs> it was none of that. But they trusted my grandma. You know, I stay. I used to go to Philadelphia every summer with my grandma, and then sometimes I go to my cousin Ina's house and stay. Well, he um he just pretty much he grained our trust, and that's when he made his mark and he took advantage of us. And for a while, I was really confused. I didn't know how to like really take it. I blamed myself for a very long time. That's the main reason why I didn't say anything. I still remember my auntie coming to ask me that he touched me, and I remember being so upset about it when she asked, and I feel like she knew. Um. But she just didn't press the issue. But I blamed myself for a long time because I was holding in the secret because I didn't want him to get in trouble. 
And I was just like, what type of person was I? Like, I, instead of me telling on him, I just protected him and didn't say anything. Um, and it bothered me for a very, very, very long time. And it got to the point where um, I hated men. I really did. Like, I just felt like they were all pray. Like they all pray on you. Like, what do you want from me? That was my mindset. Like, you just want something from me. You just want to hurt me because of what he did. Um, I couldn't come out and tell my dad because I knew my dad would be in jail. Like he would have killed him. <clears throat> I, and I just knew that. So I didn't say anything to my father. I didn't say anything to my mom. I just dealt with it. Uh, me and my cousin, Amanda, we just pretty much, that was my counselor. Whenever we seen each other, that's the first thing we talked about. And it really just shaped the current events that, I mean, the events that went on from 13. So after I got baptized, I came back home. Then that happened. And I stopped going to Philadelphia a while. And then I hit about 16. I went through the whole thing of high school, not wanting to talk to no boys. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. I questioned my sexuality. Like, okay, do I like girls or do I like boys? Like, you know, I dress like a boy. I pretend like I'm a boy. I want to be like them. But the older I got, I realized it was a defense mechanism. I just didn't want to be taken advantage of like I was previously. Um, then by the time I hit 18, I decided, okay, well, boys are not that bad. Let's try something. So I lost my virginity. That was the dumbest thing I could have done because it was like, it was no love. Or, it was really me just trying to see what it was like. Maybe a year later, I ended up pregnant with Jeremiah. <laughs> my dad was so angry. I lost my virginity at 18. A year later, at 19, I get pregnant with Jeremiah. Just real foolish. And then after I had Jeremiah, um, his dad, I didn't, I didn't want to be with his dad. I was very angry that I got pregnant. I was so mad with myself. I was just like, I don't want to have this baby. Like I'm 19. I'm about to go to college. I was like, uh, I'm about to go to a clinic and just do what I got to do. Like, I remember having this conversation with him like it was yesterday and he was so angry. He's like, you should trying to get an abortion. I was like, yeah, like, boy, I'm 19. I ain't trying to have no baby. And then, you know, um, I went through all these emotions and then I decided, well, okay, I put myself in this predicament. I'm going to have to live with it. I'm just going to have the baby and be done with it. Um, I told my parents, <laughs> of course, my mom was like, you just messed up your life. You better not drop out of school. That was just stupid. La, la, la. It was more so like crucifying me. You better stand in front of the church and let them know that you have sinned. I was just like, I am not the only person that gets pregnant at 19, but okay. I did it because you know, I'm obedient to my parents. Like I went through the whole motion. Um, I was really embarrassed that I had to do that. I was shamed that I was pregnant. And my dad, because he knew I was shamed, he told everybody to, you know, I guess to embarrass me. That was his way of punishing me. Um, but I had a great church family because they didn't judge me. Instead, they they loved on me. Like they truly, truly encouraged me. They loved on me. And, you know, they was like, you know, everybody make mistakes. It's okay. Like your, your act was a mistake, but that's a blessing because a lot of people can't have babies. So just, you know, we're going to help you get through it. And they did. Um, but I didn't want to be with Jeremiah's dad. So I'll say by the time I was like six months pregnant, I told him like, listen, I don't want to be with you. Like, I, I don't love you. I'm already mad that I ended up pregnant with you. Was Jeremiah's dad at the time, was he a Christian? No, he was in the world. Oh, he was in the world. Yeah. I don't know why like church girls always settle for um, worldly dudes. And it is vice versa as well. Mm-hmm. Like, it could be a, a, a church guy and... Like it's a worldly woman. It's like Samson, right? Yeah, pretty much. Samson used to go to Timna. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't deal with the the holy women. He went in the world. I had a negative. But now I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I had a negative mindset when it came to church guys. I felt like my ministers always say date within the faith. I'm just like, wow, they just like worldly men. Like they're not any different. They just come to church. That was the young. Immature Jasmine. I really didn't understand what he yeah. like. Now I truly understand why he used to always say that. Um, but you're right. It's very interesting. Like we always go for the worldly men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But real quick, let, I, 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 look, you said a lot of things. You said a mouthful, right? So let, let's tiptoe. I'm going to go back a little bit. Right. Okay. So you got baptized at 13. So were your mom and your dad, were they Christians uh, when you got baptized? So you came from a biblical uh, you had a biblical foundation before you got baptized? Oh, yes. I've been in Church of Christ all my life. That's all I know. My grandma was Church of Christ. Like, that's who, that's who. Matter of fact, I got baptized in Philadelphia with my grandma. She was like, listen, you 13. It's time for you to meet the Lord. It's time for you to live for him. Right. <laughs> and that's just how it went. Oh, oh wow. And so from 13, so I, I asked that because um, I could recall when I was, I was 12 years old, 12. To 15 years old, I was sent to the islands to live with my uncle. And all we did was go to church. And so we went to, you was young, we went to church for the girls. 
we, again, we didn't know any better. But I, re, I could recall the, the preacher used to say, oh, you know, if y'all, y'all don't get married, y'all going to go to hell. Or if y'all do certain things with women before getting married, y'all going to go to hell. So I'm trying to think. So now when you told me that you was pregnant at 19, I want to know if you had that kind of conviction because you're 13 years old, you got baptized, and here you are, you're 19, you get pregnant. Like, was there, like, the did the Holy Spirit convict you even prior to engaging those kind of activities? It did. Were there warning signs? Could you could you share that? Because I, I think it's important for young ladies and young men to know, um, you know, so they won't get into the same same thing you got into. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. But I did feel a conviction, um, but it wasn't like a heavy one. It was like, you're wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. But I ignored it, and I did it anyway. Even with his dad, like I just knew that that wasn't going to work. Um I knew it wasn't going to work and I had a habit of ignoring my spirit. Like my spirit would tell me, even when I was, even when I was in high school, like it was certain things that I would not engage in because my spirit say, don't do it. Like I could literally, it literally, like I felt it and I would, I would listen to it. But as I got older, I was like, okay, I'm tired of being this good girl. Like I'm tired of like being the virgin, not doing anything wrong. Like I want to live like everybody else, like everybody else out here having a good time. I did uh, ignore my spirit a lot. I made a habit of it. And you know how it says in the Bible, how you continue to, well, I don't know if it says the Bible, but you know, Minnesota always say the more you ignore it, the smaller and smaller that sound gets. Like you're, you don't really hear your, if you keep ignoring your spirit, eventually you won't hear it anymore. You can, the Lord just going to let you do what you want. That's pretty much what happened to me. So I kept ignoring it. I kept ignoring my spirit, especially when I hit by 18, because I was just determined to live in the world. I was so naive, <laughs> like so naive. Um, but I just got tired of like being the good girl, like the one who does everything right. The one who goes to church, the one who listens to their parents. Like my friends, I felt like my friends are just like having a great life because their parents allowed them to do certain things. They didn't have to go to church. Like, you know, um, I didn't resent going to church. I actually love going to church. Church was never an issue for me to go to. Um, I just felt like as a Christian, it was so many rules. Like I didn't understand. I didn't, it was, I went to a traditional church in the beginning. So it's like my, my understanding of serving God was you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. I was just like, Oh, like this is just not for me. I'm too young to be confined down. I can't do this. Can't do that. Um, and that led up to me just living the way I want, which is how Jeremiah pretty much got here. Um, and then when I told his father I didn't want to like be with him anymore, he was just like, well, why? And I'm just like, because I don't love you. Like, I don't even want to have this baby, but I'm having it. Let's just co-parent. And I don't think that's what he wanted to hear. Because <laughs> uh, he was just like, well, if I can't have you guys, you being a little girl, you should come move in with me. And I'm just like, okay, you live with your aunt. I live at home. All I have to do is go to school and save my money for this baby. That's dumb for me to leave my house. I'm already dumb because I'm pregnant, but I'm leaving my house to come live with you and somebody else and pay bills. That's just stupid. I'm not doing that. I just rather be co-parent. And he pretty much told me like, if it was, if it didn't go his way, then forget both of us. He just didn't want to be bothered. So he walked away um, and has not been a part of Jeremiah life at all. Um, I've seen him and I blame myself for that too. That I think when that happened, I really went through something mentally because it really like it messed me up real bad. And it wasn't the fact that because I wanted to be with him because I didn't. But the fact that you will walk away from this baby that you made a big fuss about me having 
and then you don't be a part of his life. I think that's what hurt more because then I had to start explaining to Jeremiah as he got older why his dad wasn't around. Like it's to bring tears to my eyes. Like I literally, I will say when he got about 10, I finally got over that. But from the time he was born to he got to 10 years old, I really struggled with it. Like it really, really bothered me. I just, I didn't know how to explain to him, you know, I, I blame myself. I feel like, you know, maybe I should just stay around so he can have a father in his life. Maybe I was just being selfish. Like I went through all those emotions. Um, but needless to say, I just feel like if you, regardless of what our relationship was, there was no need for you to walk out on him. So I went through that as well. I went through another phase of hating men again, but this time it was, I want to hurt every person that come my way. Hurt people, hurt people. I really went through that. I went through this real, I use the word ratchet because that's what I was. I went through this real ratchet, arrogant period of my life. Um, I was very arrogant, um, had like, when it came to men, I had like a real nasty attitude. It's all about what you could do for me. If you couldn't do nothing for me, I didn't want to be bothered. Um, and I purposely hurt them because I was hurting. Um, I remember after Jeremiah was born, I said, literally sit up in the room and just drink alcohol all the time. Because I was just so depressed. And my parents and my sister and my family seen it. And when they'll say something to me, I should get so defensive. Like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm just living life. And then when I stopped those acts and reflected back, I was like, wow, I was like really going through something. I was really messed up. I didn't realize how messed up I was. Ja- Jasmine, you must have left the Lord as, at this time, right? Yeah, Did I you did. leave God? Uh, yeah. Because I, I, not- I always tell people that God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. But I always yeah. tell people that. Um, God, he doesn't leave us, but we leave God. Um, so I want you to just walk through that process, how by, by you, um, leaving God, um, like what happened, like, you know, I want you to share some of those experiences. I know you say you, you started drinking, you started treating men a certain kind of way. Um, cause as you're talking, are, are, are you, all our, all I could hear is that, okay, you got baptized at 13, you got pregnant at 19 and then. I'm like, man, where's God in this? Like, like, wait, yeah. So I want you to, I want you to walk us through that process. I did walk away. Now, okay, I'll say this: when I was pregnant with Jeremiah, um, I was actively in the church. I was going to church, reading my Bible stuff every day. Um, and I don't know mm-hmm. what shift, what shift that. If I'm being honest, I really don't know. I know after I had him, I kind of feel like I just got sucked back in life again. And it was still the mindset. I think my real issue was not really understanding what I was reading, not really understanding that it was all about having a relationship with God. It wasn't so much of obeying all these rules because once you develop that relationship with him, you're going to naturally want to obey him. I didn't understand that. I would literally go to church every Sunday and not retain anything that was being preached to me. Um, Right. I was just so caught up in myself, so caught up in my own world, so caught up in the little drama that I had going on. Like, um, And I wasn't like, I mean, I was in school. Matter of fact, yeah, I was in college during this time. Um, and I pray every now and then, but I wasn't faithful. Um, again, I went to church every Sunday, but that's all I did. I wasn't active. I wasn't going to Bible study. I wasn't reading anything because in my mind, I felt like I have to be perfect to serve God. So what's the point? What's the point of trying to do everything I hear every Sunday? Cause I'm not perfect. Like I don't want to follow all these rules. I want to do what I want to do. That was really my mindset. And I walked away from God. I walked away from him for a while, for a long time. I'm going to say from like, I would say from 13 to about 18, I was serving God. Like I was on point, um, keeping myself pure, trying to understand his word. But from 18 to all the way to 29, oh, there was no God in my life. Yeah, I went to church, but that was it. And I, you know, I even had to learn that just because you go to church don't make you a Christian. Because in my head, I thought I was a Christian. Oh, I go to church every Sunday, but it, it became to be routine because that's all I know was to go to church on Sundays. If I didn't go to church on Sunday, I felt so convicted. Like you should be in church. Why are you sitting at home? But nothing else bothered me, which is interesting. <laughs> nothing else bothered me but not going to church. But I wasn't applying anything that I learned at church a part of my life. I just thought that because I went to church, I was a Christian. So I can go to church and I could do, I mean, I would get out of church and go smoke weed with my cousin. And I didn't see anything wrong with it. Just like truly ignorant. And during this time, my parents, like they were, they, I'm not going to say they were like not a great example, 
but no one in my house was really studying. No one in my house was really active. So that's what I seen. And that's what I thought that was okay. You know, but my grandmother, when she came to stay with us, my grandma, like I seen her actively in her Bible every single day. She was studying every day, every day she get up and she taught. And she said, maybe come to the room, come in here and talk to the Lord with me. Let's read this study together. And I ain't had the heart to tell her no. I was like, okay. And I'll come in and she'll, you know, we'll have a Bible study stuff together. Um, again, I didn't have anything against it. I didn't mind doing it. I just didn't want to obey God. I felt like my way was a better way. And whoa, oh, what I tell you, I, I really made myself go through so many trials and tribulations because I walked away from God. So, so is it safe to say that that a person could be in corporate worship and disconnected with God? Oh, of course. Like you could just pretty much just check check in a box, like you said, like you're you're here on Sunday. And and you're you just check the box attendance like I'm I'm here you're a teacher so so you 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 check attendance but you know I was just about to say that's interesting that you said that about your grandmother because um I was about to ask you um man where was your family in this um in the midst like breaking the word of God to you because like even for me for my children um I pray with them I make sure that I pray with them on a weekly basis we pray together as a family. And I was about to say, you you must have had a praying grandmother. And lo and behold, you brought up your your grandmother. So I want you to kind of like walk us through that process. Like, how did your relationship with your grandmother start to evolve as she started to share the word of God with you? And how did that correlate with growing a relationship with God at the same time? So walk me through that process because I'm interested to know like what happened. Because I hear a person that left God. And now, now God is showing you signs. Now God, actually, she's an angel. Your grandmother's an angel that came in your life. So walk, walk us, walk us through that process. Well, my grandma lived in Philly, so I only seen her during the summers. But she actually came down to Florida, and she she moved down. When I was in high school, which helped keep me grounded because I always did Bible studies and stuff with her. But then she went back to Philadelphia, and then she came back down when I was about I was in my early twenties. I was living on my own then, but she would stay with my mom then. And every time I went to the house, we just talked about God. And she used to always remind me of how blessed I was. She used to always say, oh, you need to thank God for that because that was God who gave that to you. Like she used to always say little stuff like that. I was like, yeah, you're right, grandma. But it's like it went through one ear and out the other. Like I truly didn't appreciate him at all. But I don't know, whenever I had an issue, whenever I felt like it, whenever I felt very, um, my spirit, when I felt down and stuff, I would go to my grandma because I knew that that was a connection I had with God. She was connected to God. So that's who I went to every single time. And she would pray for me. We'll talk about something. She used to always remind me, well, you got to get your life right. You got to give it to God. You can't. And I used to call these excuses. Well, grandma, I'm not perfect. No one is. And then she began to tell me her story, how the many mistakes that she made in life, but she never stopped serving God. And I still didn't understand what it looked like though. It's like, she would say these things, but I'm thinking, okay, but you still like, so what did you do? You know, she said, she was telling me how she, you know, she, um, she talked about her, her affairs with men and stuff and, you know, the things that she went through coming up, but through it all, she still remained the church. She still remained in her word. She still like to stand on the corners and talk to people about God. And I was just like, I ain't trying to do that grandma. Like, you know, just so stubborn. She was really the only true example, um, that I had. Um, again, my parents, they went to church or whatever, but they weren't, they, they were like what you call, it was like a routine. They were worldly, worldly mindset, but went to church. Like they gave God the glory, but it was like, you know how you have people in the world who go to church on Sundays, like a routine, check off and went to church. And in their mind, they're Christians. That, that was my parents. Um, my grandma though was very faithful. Like she was the true. That's when I seen when I seen her, I feel this is my connection to God. That was my mindset when I see my grandma. And she truly helped me. Like I remember before she passed, before she passed, I already had turned my life around and gave my life to God by this time. But before then, she said, like, you know, come come in the room, come have talks with me. You know, she's trying to talk to me all the time when it came to God. She just she every day she reminded me of how blessed I was. Every day she reminded me um how I should give thanks to God. Um and again, it just kind of went through one and out the other because I was so stubborn in my mind, I had to be perfect. I gotta follow these rules. I don't wanna follow no rules. Like I'm just gonna go to church and I'm still a Christian. I mean, I read the Bible every day, but I'm still a Christian. I mean, I I wasn't praying at all. My prayer life was horrible, but I'm still a Christian. Like, 
I had this worldly mindset of a Christian. So you said before she passed away, you 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 got you came back to the Lord, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. And, and again, I'm trying to help somebody out there. Maybe somebody is stuck, right? Just think about the person that's probably going to worship every Sunday, disconnected, and can't find a way out. So when you came back to God, because I always tell people it's hard to come back to God. Once you leave God, the devil will make it hard for you to come back to God. Remember, God never leaves us. We leave God, but the, the devil will make it like extremely hard for us to come back. Like When I mean come back, I mean not physically, but spiritually. So when you say that you got back to, you know, came back to God, like what happened? What was it? What was the straw that broke the camel's back that said, you know what? I give up. I surrender. Hear my Lord. Send me. I will never forget this night. After this night, it actually happened two years after this night. But one night I was in my apartment and I don't know, like, I don't know what came over me. I was very emotional. I was laying next to the guy I was dating. I was very emotional. Um, I had just had sex with him. He went to sleep or whatever. And I was like really, really emotional. Like my spirit was so heavy. And I remember closing my eyes and saying, Lord, I'm ready to come back home. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, please forgive me. Like, I don't want to die of AIDS. I don't want to die of diseases. Like, I don't know what's going on with me, but this is not the life of me. I'm about to get emotional. <laughs> but, I was, um, but I was like, this is not the life of me. Like, I don't want to live this life anymore. Like, help me. Two years later, like, it did not happen right away. I still remember that prayer. I still remember laying in bed and just crying the entire night. And I don't know, I still do not to this day, I don't know why my spirit was so heavy. But Two years later, life became really hard. Like this dude that I was with, the same guy, he was like treating me like I was trash, disrespecting me and stuff, um, telling me he going to kill me and bury my body in locks of hatchet and stuff. Like, yeah, it was that bad. My job, things was going wrong with my job. Like I was on the uh, verge of getting fired. My principal was trying to file a, a charge against me, a bogus stuff. And what really did it was I was sitting on the porch of my sister one day and she was, we was on the porch and she would just talk about people in the city who have diseases, who have AIDS. I'm terrified of diseases. Like that is the one thing that scares me more than anything, having something and can't get rid of it and not knowing that you have it. So she would talk about people that we know. And I was high this night (laughs) and she would be talking about it. And for some reason, my mind just like went, like it just started going like this and all I could think about was like oh what if I have something like I don't know if he's out there doing something like just the thought of it it scared me straight I remember going in the room laying down get back up I was like I gotta go to church I went and got tested for everything I was really tripping (laughs) like I thank God for it though I truly truly thank him for like allowing the enemy just to have his way with me um I, I went and got tested for everything. Every disease I thought you can get tested for, I went and got tested for it. And for like three weeks straight, I was like a mute. I legit didn't talk to anybody. Like I would go to functions and stuff and it's like, what is wrong with you? Like, what's the matter with you? I was so like in distress. I'm like, oh Lord, I ain't got these results back yet. Like nobody called me. What if I had something? I was really, really tripping. But what really did it for me is I went to church that Sunday. I don't heard the heaven and hell uh, lesson uh, probably like a thousand times, but this Sunday it hit me. It hit hard. He would just talk about, you know, um, how we play with God and how, you know, we take things for granted. If we was to leave here right now, where would we go? Would we go to heaven or we go to hell? And I truly believed in heaven and hell. And when he said that, I would just sat there. I literally cried that whole Sunday. And I just sat there. I was like, wow. Remind you, this is two years after I said that prayer that night in the bed, I, and I was sincere with that prayer. I truly wanted to change. And within those two years, I went through so many trials, like again, him being abusive, like mentally, um, me going through, me going through the emotions I was going through with my job. It was like event at the event at the event. Like I could not catch a break. And then I went to church that Sunday and that heaven and hell sermon, it hit me so hard. I went home and I called him. I was like, you know, all these years I've been going to church. I was like, and I hear God talk to me every Sunday. And I said, I never apply it. I was like, today I want to start applying it. I said, what's the point of going to church if I'm not going to apply what he teaches me? That's just pointless. And I remember saying to him, I don't want to have sex anymore. I don't want to live this way anymore. Like I want to serve God. 
he told me on the other end, he was like, well, you're doing that by yourself because I don't want to do that. And if you don't have sex with me, I'm going to have it with somebody else. So then I, I hung up the phone. He came to the house and my parents was in Jamaica. So I was by myself at this time. Um, he came to the house and he was just like, he was real nasty. And I was just like, what's wrong with you? Like, it's just sex. Like, if I mean something to you, what's the big deal? That was an eye opener for me. That that's all I was worth to him. It was nothing more than that. And I remember saying, well, I just wanted to see how you felt. When I tell you, I was so convicted when I made that comment to him. I was like, well, I'm not going to do it. I just want to see what you was going to say. And he left. When he left, I was so convicted. And I began crying again. Like, Lord, I'm sorry. I just put a man over you. I don't want this. Like, help me get out of this relationship. Help me get away from it. And then I started reading this book called The Pursuit of Holiness. And this book, I don't know who the author was. I sent it to my cousin. This book was so good. Um, and it just talked about how you pursue holiness and it had a lot of scriptures in it and I could not put the book down. I literally read it in three days. I could not put it down. And then I started reading the Bible, like staying up late. It's late night. Everybody's sleeping. I'm reading the Bible and I'm actually understanding what I'm reading. It was like God was just getting me all the way together. Like I felt it in my spirit as I was reading. And from that point, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this, Lord. Like, I hear you. And when the results came back that I was uh, negative of everything, I was like, oh, yes, Lord. I went in the bathroom. I said, Lord, I hear you. I'm going to get my life right. I don't want to do this no more. Like, I'm going to live for you. By this time, I'm still dating him, though. And it's like, I was so, I felt so much joy when I was by myself. But every time he came around, it was like a dark cloud. I remember asking my minister. I used to call my minister every single day, crying, asking questions. And he was like, Jazza, what is going on? I said, I'm just tired. I am tired of living my life like this. Like, I want peace. My mind is going crazy. I am going crazy. And I don't know how to deal with this. I just want peace. And he was like, oh, that's God. He's like, it's time for you to come home. I was like, I'm ready. And I was telling him how I felt like a dark cloud was coming to me every time he was around. He was like, that's your adversary and you need to let that go. He was like, you need to walk away from that. Cut it off. He said, if you continue to feel like a dark cloud is over you every time you're around him, then it's him. Walk away from it. I finally got the courage and I told him, like, listen, I don't want to do this no more. I said, you don't want to serve God with me? I'm doing it by myself. I am prepared to do this by myself with or without you. And from that day forth, I've been going ever since. Wow. Look, that's that that is amazing. Um see, I, I like to hear stories like that. You know, from you having a child at 19 years old from relationship. And these not these not godly men, right? These these are like worldly men. And I I I, I could never understand why why it's like that where these worldly men want to mess with these godly sisters and vice versa. Uh Godly brothers want to mess with worldly women. It's not going to work. We talk about unequally yoked. It's not going to work. It's not. So, yeah, I I love your story. And somebody out there is probably thinking like, mm, I, I can relate to Jasmine's story. I just can't get rid of him. I just can't. I tell you, I meet countless of women all the time. Young lady, that's not your husband. That's not your husband. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a dude. Look, I wasn't always a Christian. I'm a dude. I know what's going on. I know what time, but you know, you know, sisters get caught up in emotions. Well, I love him. He loved me too. He loved me too. So my question to you, Sister Jasmine. So all that stuff you went through, because you went through hell and hot water. You left God, got pregnant at 19, messing with worldly dudes, um, feeling dark clouds. I would say that's the enemy. That was the enemy. <laughs> the enemy was in the midst. What would you tell your younger self? Now that you have all this wisdom, all this, you you filled with God glory. If you were to sit down with your younger self today to knock some sense into her, what would you tell her? First, I would tell her, don't leave God. No matter, you don't have to be perfect to worship him. You don't have to be perfect to serve him. Just have a relationship with him. It took me the longest to learn that. And you're going to mess up. You're going to have your hiccups, but don't stop serving him. If you continue to seek righteousness, no matter how many times you have failed, he will keep you up. He will make things right for you. Like you will, it's going to come to a point where you're not going to want to desire to do the things that you used to do because you're seeking him. 
and you will find him. He's not going to hide from you. If you continue to seek, he is going to answer. He's going to open that door. Like, you just cannot, don't walk away from him. Life was so hard for me because I walked away from him. It's so many blessings I feel like I miss because I walked away. I walked away because I wanted to do things my way. And my way wasn't the best way. I hurt myself over and over and over. Like, I really feel like the children of Israel, I did 40 years when I didn't even have to. I could have did two weeks instead of 40 years. I did 40 years because I was stubborn and wanted to do things my way. Had I just stuck with him, um, I would have been fine. I even felt like even going way back to my trauma, I should have said something. I should have stepped out on faith and said something because I could have got the proper help for that. And I really feel like it would have shifted my mindset and really helped me be, a. it would have helped me like do better as a young woman. Um, the trauma caused my, uh, caused my mindset to like really shift when it came to men. Being pregnant at 19 caused my mindset to shift again. But had I just kept God in my life, no matter how frustrated I got with life, no matter how perfect I thought I had to be, if I truly, truly seeked him, I wouldn't be where I was at this age. I appreciate, I honestly, I'm grateful for the story. I'm grateful for what I went through because I wouldn't be who I am today. I just wish I didn't have to go through such heartache and so many pain and agony at such a young age when I could have just got it right the first time. <laughs> Amen. And you know what? We're not perfect, but there's some people that really get it, right? They, they'll they see somebody that make a mistake. They'll be like, I ain't going that direction. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. But I think you said it best. Um, our stories make us who we are uh, today. Because uh, even, even with me, um, you know, hell and hot water too. God had knocked some sense into me in order, order for me uh, to... <laughs> To, to, you know, to come to the knowledge of the truth. But I thank God that he knocked some sense into me and and, and just like you. So um, it's so much I want to ask you, but I I, don't, I really don't want to prolong because you you shared so much stuff. And I really believe that it could be it could be a, a benefit to to somebody out there um, like to. Mm, I don't know if I should go there because I did an episode. It was called um, Stolen Innocence. Part one, part two, and part three. Um, it was a young girl, 10 years old, that got raped. She got raped mm-hmm. by someone in the household. Um, she didn't tell anybody until she was in high school. Um, and she had identity. Um, she didn't, she had she didn't even know what she was. She didn't even know whether she was a female, a boy, tomboyish, and uh, end up mm-hmm. liking a woman, became homose- you know, homosexual. She liked women. But in the end, God ended up delivering um this individual. But when you started to mention that, that this person tried to violate you in that way, do you think a lot of that happened in our community? It does. But it's a generational curse in my family. It happened to my auntie's husband did it to her daughter because it wasn't his daughter. He did it to her. He tried to do it to her sister. And then his daughter husband did it to us. And they they all swept up under the rug. On my dad's side, my uncle did the same thing to my uncle's, to my other uncle's daughter. And gave her a deadly disease that she can't get rid of. So it's like, and in the back, and what they do is they push it up under the rug. What goes on this house stay in this house. That's the problem. Which is why I was 33 when I came out of Sesame. This happened at 13. I dealt with from 13 all the way to 33. And I probably would have never said anything if my cousin Amanda didn't come out. My cousin Amanda came out because she seen him. Um, with my uh, other cousin's little girl picking her up from school. And she said she was so convicted, like she just had to say something. And I didn't want my parents to find out through everybody else. So I just finally came out and said something. Wow. Because the guest that I had on that that went through that same situation, Stolen Innocent, she said, even though that my violator did that to me, she said, I pray for him to this day that God changes soul. She forgave that person, by the way. She forgave him because God gave her the strength um, to forgive that individual. And she said to this day, she still pray for him because she don't want him to to be in hell. She don't want him to be in hell in hot water uh, or hell fire um, forever. So do you have that mindset? I, I know you said it, this is something that was recently, uh, you know, discussed. And do you have that mindset like God delivered this person? I do. I truly forgave him. I do not hate him. Um, 
at all. And when I see him, I want him to know. Like, I really wanted to like have a powwow with him and his wife, like confront it and be open. His wife doesn't believe us. She thinks that we're lying, uh, which is typical. I wasn't even upset when I heard that. Um, right. And of course, she tried to deny it. But I just want him to know you took my innocence, but it's OK. God still gave me strength to forgive yeah. you and still have love for you. Like, I don't hate him at all. I really do wish the Lord would help him, but I don't hate him. And I still, I'm still, I turned out to be all right. Even after all that happened, I turned out to be okay. The Lord still protected me. He still gave me the strength to deal with it. Cause that's a lot to deal with at 13 and you don't tell anybody. It is. Like as a child, like you're just processing it on your own. And he was so manipulative. Like, you know, if y'all tell me about it, I'm going to get in trouble. So don't say nothing. And we, and we definitely did that. I feel like I even owe my cousin an apology. I felt like my loyalty was with him and not her. And I should have told her. I even wanted to apologize to her. Like, that's me. I feel like at this point, I have healing. Um, I'm yeah, truly healing amen. from it. Amen. So it, it doesn't have power over me anymore. So I'm able to talk about it. I'm able to forgive him. I'm able to forgive his wife. Because for a long time, I was mad with her too, because she knew. She knew. She just didn't say anything. No, it's good you're sharing it. Because um, again, we live in a real world. And it might be somebody that's going through it that's going to listen to this podcast. Um, even um, the guest that I had on on that shared on well stolen innocence, I asked my guest. I said, "Well, what can we do um, to bring a, like awareness and and to get it out there? Because um, somebody need to know. Like some sometimes women and young men need to find solutions of how to combat, like fight what they're going through. And sometimes they don't know how to because they're like confused. Like, oh, I don't know what's going on. They don't know who to go to, who to trust." So I think by even listening to um, forums like this, is plat- this type of platform, it could help them, that they could go to the police, that they could probably go to the authorities to get these people arrested. But let's continue. So my, I had a brother that once told me, he said, Nick, we have two initial calls. You know, God calls us twice. God, the initial call is that God calls us to t- salvation. That's when God calls us to ministry. God calls us to salvation. And God, the second call is when God calls us back home. And then when he said, that, I said, wow, that's true. I said, because um, we're all called for a purpose. You know, we are called by God. That's why it's called Called by God Podcast. We're called. We're called twice. But um, right now we're playing out our call, our calling um, and our purpose here on earth. So when God called, he called you for a purpose. You left him and then you return back to him like that prodigal daughter that came back and going hard for him. So, do you know what you're called to do while you're here on earth? I think it's my voice. I think it's um it's not a coincidence that I'm in teaching. I felt like I limit my calling. I limit myself because I just thought that my calling was to be a teacher in the classroom that's it. But it's really to be a teacher in the kingdom. I mean like I don't mean like a preacher or anything. I mean like just a teacher and I say that because when I talk to people, it's like I can see them drawn in completely into me while I'm talking to them. Like they're zoomed, they're all the way in, they're not distracted or anything. I feel like my voice has power to it, which is why I wanted the podcast to just share, you know, share my stories, like talk to young women, help them to do better and stuff. Um, even write a book. I feel like my voice is my calling. It's it has power, it has something in it. Cause the Lord just put it in me, even with you know, helping with kids and stuff, all in that nature. I, I, I don't, I can't pinpoint it. I just like, it's so many things. I just know that my voice is the biggest thing. That's the only thing I hear is your voice. It has to be heard. You have to let people know what you went through. Your job is to help others, to teach them about me, to tell me, tell them about me. Like even in the classroom, I know they say you're not supposed to talk about God in school, but when my students ask me about God, I tell them I'm bold with it. Because I feel like he is the reason why I have this job. I know he's the reason why I have this job. I got hired literally the first day I I interviewed and was hired the same day. And it was not by coincidence that I went to that school. Um, So I know that he's the reason why I have the job, which is why I'm bold enough to talk about him to any and everybody at the job. I I mean, I don't force him on anybody, but when they come to me, they're going to get a godly response. They're going to always get godly wisdom because that's just what, I feel like it's the best thing to do. So when the kids come ask me questions about God, I love talking about God. I mean, you should see their faces. They be so drawn into me. Like my voice has this power to like, they're glued. They don't move. They're not distracted. They're not talking. That's the one time they are truly paying attention. Amen. So 
I just feel like that's why I'm here. I am here to teach about God because I'm not afraid to do it. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what God is about to do with you. But I want to ask you this. So when God call you home, the second call, Mm -hmm. what do you want to be remembered for when God call you home? Um, that's a great question. Yeah, because look, if you, we got like people like Martin Luther King and all the greats that came before us, we remember them for something. Well, of course, Martin Luther King, I had a dream. And then mm-hmm. we we could even go back to Jesus. Remember Jesus Christ. He He's a historical figure that came here on earth. He died and he was resurrected. Now he's back up there in glory. We know Paul. Paul wrote uh, several epistles and we know him for something. So when people look, you know, look at Jasmine, Sister Jasmine Reed, if they out, you want them to say this at your eulogy, boy. That sister right there. What? What is it? Um, she was a real one. She was very transparent, and she did not mind helping others at all. She did not mind sharing her story. You know, a lot of people in the Church of Christ are very. They don't like to talk about their past. They don't mm. want people to know what they did. I'm not afraid to talk about my past. I'm free from it. I'm free from the things that I did wrong. Um, yes, the things, amen. the silly things that did. Like I'm, I'm. When I say I'm free from it, I am completely free from it. Which is why I am so willing to share with any and everybody what I went through, especially the young ladies, because this generation now, yeah. they need it more than ever. Like they think that having a man is what they're supposed to have, and a lot of times it's not even men that we're entertaining. They're little boys. I just want to know to love yourself. That's the one thing, one of the main things that. I learned coming back to God. He taught me how to truly love me and he showed me my value. I truly understand what my value is, which is why I'm not willing to throw my pigs, my pearls to swine. Um, I truly get that. And I want, I want to be that voice for them. I want them to know that it's okay for you to make the mistakes you make, but come to God. Don't, don't live in that. Don't live in your darkness. Come out of it. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to feel like you're you're unworthy because of what you did. Because at the end of the day, we all have skeletons. We all have done something wrong. And I'm not afraid to tell what Amen. I did. I'm not afraid to tell who I was because that's not who I am now. I'm thankful for who I was. Um. So now what? What's next? What's next in your spiritual journey? How are you going to build God kingdom up? What's next? I want that podcast. I really want like, I am so passionate about the youth. I want to pour into the youth. They don't know anything about God. They don't know their value. They don't know how, how, uh, they just don't know who they are. They don't know their worth. They don't know how awesome God is. They don't know what it's like to serve him. I really want them to know that it's not a law. It's not all these rules. It's truly a relationship with him. And when you truly get to know him, you're going to want to obey him. It's not, nobody's going to want to make you do anything. You're going to want to do it because he's just so good. Like, I really want to pour into our youth. That is like the biggest thing. I want to pour into them. I want them to know that God is really awesome. It's so refreshing to see young people, younger than me, serving God and like on fire for him. That is refreshing to me. I want, I want my son to be that way. Like my son see me go to Bible. He see me a Bible study. Like at least I have three studies that I'm on throughout the week. He see me in all my studies. He see me studying. Amen. Sometimes me and him are studying together. When he going through things, I give him godly advice because I want him to be the same way. Like I want him to know, like no matter how rough life get, do not turn away from God because you're going to suffer. You are going to suffer. Amen. Amen. I, I, I like that. Sister Jasmine, I thank you so much for answering the call. And every word that you said, I know it's going to touch somebody. Some I know I might probably get a message or an email. It's going to touch somebody out there. Again, I want to thank you again for joining the call. It blessed me. Um, so I just pray that God continue to use you and God continue to even bless your son. But before we go, let me just say one more thing. And it's not a question. I want to say something about your son. I believe your son is going to be a powerful, powerful young man. And I hope, trust and pray that uh, your son's dad, Jeremiah's dad, listened to this episode. Because I believe that fathers uh, are an important figure in son's lives. And and I'm going to, you know, (laughs) I have a son. And I love my son. I love that little young man. I mean, I love my children, love my daughter, love my son. You know, the boys, they need their fathers. And and fathers should not 
neglect their children. I can't imagine God leaving us fatherless. I, I can't imagine that. God is our earthly father. I just can't imagine. See, I had an earthly father. He left me. But when my earthly father left me and I became a father, it made me even want to love my children even harder because I don't want them to go through what I went through uh, coming up. So Jeremiah's dad, if you listening to this podcast, you need to build a relationship with your son. Contact your baby's mother. Contact your son and get a relationship with him. It's very important. You won't regret it. All right, world. So there you have it. Stay tuned. The book is coming and the podcast is coming. I claim that. I said the book. You see, so the book is coming, Sister Jasmine. So Sister Jasmine about to come up with a book and a podcast. So stay tuned. It is coming. Until then, remember that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. Be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.